Was I able to outrun the police for the final laps of this race? Welcome, I'm Rob. We're back once again at Team Sport Sheffield for an elite members event. This one is Hot Pursuit. The published format says we have five minutes for a qualifying session, which is about four laps at Sheffield. Boy, was I glad they increased that to a full 15 minutes. The first kart I had, well, this was its top speed. I'm being passed like I'm driving a cadet cart at half pace. I didn't even complete a full lap and went straight back to the pits for a second cart. This one at least made it up the ramps, but I was still being passed by everyone and I could tell it wasn't a happy cart. Let's try pitting once more and see if it really is third time to charm. It took me a couple of laps to get there, but I was able to set a 58.741, a fairly slow lap, but good enough for sixth place at least. So on to the race. Oh, the race. It's an hour long, the longest race I've taken part in. And to make it harder for the final 13 minutes, a fast staff member will be driving the fastest cart as well. If a driver is passed by the police cart, they are eliminated from the race. So let's set up the grid and here is where I make my first mistake. I line myself up on the grid box for seventh place and I don't realise for a while that I've got it wrong. When Silky spots it, I wave to say it's okay as it was my mistake. So I'll start from seventh instead and we'll just wait for those lights to go green. It's a good start and I'm actually able to get back ahead of Olivia to take my sixth place before we reach turn one. The timing system didn't start with the race for, well, team sport reasons and so the first couple of laps weren't shown in the app. So far, it looks like I can keep up. Whilst there is a bit of a gap starting to appear between 3rd and 4th place, the top 8 carts are pulling away from the other 10 carts too. The timing system started here, so here comes 60 minutes of racing. Nate and Amelia have started to pull away from me now as well. I'm having trouble with the brakes on this car already. They seem to be very intermittent. After a few laps though, I've started to get a feel for the brakes and start closing back up to a media. I then find myself with the assistance of a back marker to help close that gap right up. I'm wave past at the top and I keep the media in my sights.
I'm watching Amelia's car and it becomes obvious that I won't be able to get past in one of my usual places. Her cart is a lot quicker, lower down in the revs than mine. Having seen the same gap being left on the previous four laps, I knew if I could just get myself close enough, I could make the move here. I'm up into fifth now, but I know her cart is quicker at those lower RPMs. I take a semi-defensive line around the lap and slowly start to pull out a bit of a gap. Several more laps later and we got a pair of back markers. I've watched Nate in fourth place make his way through with a little bit of trouble and I'm now trying to work out how I'll do it. I've got Amelia and Kieran fairly close behind so I'll try not to get held up too much. Cart 18 is easily passed up the inside of turn 2. Whilst Darren in car 20 didn't want to make it easy, and I get held up by a few corners. As I look behind, I see I've finally got some breathing space. Kieran and Amelia look to have been held up too. Kieran is now catching up fast, so I give him a quick hand gesture to let him know I won't be making it easy for him. I return to semi-defensive lines and my brakes have started paying up once again. Sometimes they get a long pedal, whereas other times they just lock up. They're also sticking on, slightly going over the bumps. As we begin to catch a back marker once again, my brakes start to work properly once more and I'm confident in my ability to keep Kieran behind for now. The gap to Nate ahead is remaining about the same too, so that's good. The back marker does signal me around the outside and Kieran follows around as well. Approaching turn two now, I see the flashing lights. And the board is shown at turn three. The police have been called. Kieran is still right behind me.
At this stage, Kieran is now closer than he has ever been. I'm having to go fully defensive drive now. My brakes are playing up again and I'm having to brake early into some corners. Kira hits the back of me at turn one as a result of my early braking. The brakes seem to have sorted themselves out again for the moment, but I'm sure it will happen again. I'm catching a back marker, so I'm hoping I get past at a place where Kieran can't follow me. Ah, he's waved me through. Kieran can follow me here. And with that, I set my fastest lap of the race. I'm still well off the pace we usually expect at this time of year. I've managed to pull a small gap to Kieran at this point, so I get a bit of a rest. Uh oh, that's the police car going into turn one, so he's about 15 seconds behind us now. The police car has a big group of cars ahead of it though, we'll have to see how quickly you can clear them. I'm 
I get caught out by Darren's lack of pace up the ramp and give him quite a big hit once we reach the top. He doesn't make it easy, so I have to go around the outside of Darren. And the police car is still stuck in that group. My brakes have started sticking again now, so I've got to try and keep an eye on what Kieran is doing behind me. I've lost track of the police car, unsure where it is at the moment. I know where Kieran is though, he's right on my bumper. I can see the police lights flashing in the pits. Where is he going to come back out? I see the lights on the roof, it's coming for us. There is no way I'm letting Kira pass now. The police car is all over the back of Kieran, and Kieran is all over the back of me. We've got 10 laps left, can either of us hold on? With Kieran now having to defend from a police car, I've got a bit of breathing space. The more space I can own myself now, the more chance I have of keeping that police car behind me later on.
I glance behind coming up the ramp and Kieran is still holding on for now. He's through! Kieran is eliminated and I'm next in line for the police cart. There's six laps left to go. Can I hold on? Will I make it to the end of the race? Can I hold off the fastest cart of the fleet for six whole laps? Find out next week on Rob Goes Racing. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I won't commentate through this, but I do apologise for all the looking around. I just really needed to know where Elliot was. I could have done with rigging up a rear-facing camera too for you guys. But, here we go.
Yes! I didn't immediately relax as it wasn't obviously the chequered flag to begin with. I soon realised though and I'd held him off for five of the hardest laps I've ever had to do. Whilst Elliot was able to get partially in front at one point, he was on the outside and unable to make the move stick. He needed to get his whole cart in front of me, a challenge he was unable to complete in time. I'll give a big shout out to Elliot for his driving behind me. I really, really enjoyed the battle. A cart discrepancy of at least a second meant it wasn't going to be an easy job. My back and arms were already hurting from keeping Kieran behind me for however many laps before. If you've enjoyed this one, I know I really did. Please smash that thumbs up and leave any feedback down below in the comments. Subscribe to the channel for more kart racing or even join the membership for just one pound a month to get early access to the videos and a discount on merch in the store. Until next time though, Cheers.